All right, let's talk about shear and moment diagrams. Uh, so in this section, we're, we're learning about how to draw these shear and moment diagrams that show the internal shear force and the internal moment uh, at every point on this beam. Um, maybe we want to know, hey, what's the maximum shear force and where is it? Well, let's go ahead and draw all the shear forces at every point along the beam so then we can identify where the max shear force is and what its value is. Same thing with moment. Uh, so we're talking about internal shear and internal moment, which we did the first day of class. Remember, we would cut it, solve for N, V, and M. All right, so here most of these normal forces N are going to be zero or negligible, so we're just gonna solve for V and M. Uh, so let's watch this. Uh, if we want to find the shear, shear and moment diagrams, first we'll start by just doing the statics to find the forces at the reactions. Here there's a pin at A, a roller at B, some of the forces in Y and some moments to solve for those forces right there. Then uh, we could cut it. Now I'm gonna play this in quadruple speed because this is not what we're gonna want to do. Um, this is the hard version by cutting it at every location and solving for the internal V and the internal M. But it all, all goes back to the sum of the forces is equal to zero and the sum of the moments is equal to zero. So here we could cut it, you know, at the very beginning, we could cut it at one foot, two foot, three foot. Uh, here when we look, I'm gonna cut it at uh, the three foot section, but I'm gonna cut it at three foot before the 250 pound force and I'm gonna cut it at three feet after the 250 pound force. Uh, so you could pause this and look at these calculations, but we're, this is the long way, right? We're not gonna want to do this um, cutting it at every location. Uh, we're gonna want to look at that loading, look at that 100 pound force, look at that 250 pound force, that 150 pound force, and we'll see, uh, okay, what would this shear diagram look like? So uh, maybe you're already noticing some things about if the loading looks like this, what would the shear diagram look like? Um, I, I think the shear diagram kind of makes sense. Um, but then the moment's a little bit harder. Uh, the moment we're gonna get by looking at the shear diagram in what kind of moment diagram would that create. So I'm gonna talk about the graphical method um, by uh, looking at the loading creates the shear, the shear creates the moment diagram so that we don't have to do all of these calculations um, everywhere we are. Uh, but here you can see, you know, I'm cutting it, uh, you know, at the very end, right before that 150 pound force, uh, calculating the V and M. Then right here, I've cut it after the 150 pound force at the very end, uh, everything goes back to zero. So you'll see some things about easy ways to, to figure out our shear diagram and our moment diagram without doing all of those calculations. All right, so did you notice some things? Uh, we're gonna look at some more of these and see if you notice, you know, the loading causes the shear diagram to go up and down. Right, and then the, the, the shear diagram causes the moment diagram to go up and down, but it's all based on the sum of the forces is equal to zero and the sum of the moments is equal to zero. So in our next video, I'll really talk about the graphical method and the rules for drawing the shear diagram by looking at the loading uh, and drawing the moment diagram by looking at the shear and the loading.